This is a production of Cornell University. Okay. All right, everybody, we're going to get our pest management section started. I'm going to be your first speaker. My name is Lynn Sosneski, and I am an assistant professor here at Cornell AgriTech in Geneva in the horticulture section. And I'm focused on weed management in specialty crops, and this includes hemp. So I want to talk to you a little bit about hemp and, and weed management and why it's such a problem and what kind of strategies we have in place currently and what we can expect to have in the near future. I think if you, can you turn it up, hit the plus a bit? Try that again. Okay. Is that better? Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to talk about uh, weeds and weed management and hemp. And I've heard from a lot of growers, uh, a lot of different uh, CCE specialists, that one of the limiting factors for hemp production is, is weeds and the, and the competition from weeds. And that's in part because we don't have any registered synthetic herbicides for use in the commodity like we do in you know, our agronomic systems or our horticultural crops or our ornamental crops. Now on the flip side of that, and we'll talk about that in the second part of my talk, is it's probably going to be a little bit hard to get some of those synthetic products because hemp is extremely sensitive to a lot of different active ingredients and modes of action. So I know you don't have the, the paper handouts, but I'm going to go over what's on mine today and talk a little bit about the research we're doing and just best management practices for weed control and then talk about the herbicide work that we're doing and then talk about the herbicide injury that we've seen. Okay, so first and foremost, we are actively involved in researching weeds, weed control in hemp. Uh, I, along with colleagues from North Dakota State University, Virginia Tech, Southern Illinois University, and Clemson University, received a USDA CPPM grant to look at hemp competitiveness with weeds and to evaluate different weed management strategies, different cultural and physical weed management strategies, as well as some chemical products. We are in the first year of our trial, so I don't have data to share. I will have that for next year's hemp programs, though. One thing I can tell you is that hemp is sensitive to weed competition. You know, there's a lot going around saying that hemp is a competitive crop, you know, that, you know, it's not going to need a lot of uh, on uh, management of unwanted vegetation and certainly for the CBD hemp that is not true we need to probably keep it at least uh, weed free about four to six weeks uh, to give it a chance to to maximize yields uh, you know and, th and that's a that's that's a long time when you don't have a lot of tools available to you again preliminary work but right now that's what our data is showing ah so we are a tag team. Yeah. So if, if you want a little bit more information, what I am talking about, there's a QR code that you can scan and that's going to bring up the handouts. Actually, I just tested it. It does not bring up the handout. It brings up the website for this meeting. And then you see Lynn Sosnowski and that's where you click on for the handout. And then you get to the beautiful handout. And then you get, there's two beautiful handouts. There should be. Scan my code, raise your hand, and I'll bring it around. Right. So, barring the, the availability of herbicides, we got to really focus on integrated weed management. And the first of two handouts that I, I've provided uh, through your QR code uh, talk about integrated weed management and actually give you links to two very good integrated weed management sites. The one is called integratedweedmanagement.org. Uh, that gives a bunch of information about, you know, basic best management practices. And then the second is a website uh, that links to a book that the late Chuck Muller from Cornell University put together. It is a free book through SARE. It is absolutely wonderful. And it's Manage Weeds on Your Farm and Ecological Approach. And I'm telling you, you want to go and you want to download that PDF. It is 
perhaps one of the best free resources you are going to get for weed management. But to kind of summarize what both of those sites are saying, when it comes to weed management and hemp, first and foremost, if you have the ability uh, to choose your sites that you're going to plant your hemp crop into, you definitely want to, to do that. You want to choose your fields wisely. So if you have fields that have perennial weeds like field bindweed, like Canada thistle, or you have very high weed densities, if you have the ability to avoid those fields, you want to avoid those fields because you want to start off with as low a weed pressure as possible when you're putting a crop in that you don't have chemical control strategies. If you have the ability to adjust your planting date, if you know you have a weed and you know it gets up early or it gets up late and you can adjust your planting date to either avoid that weed species or to give the hemp a competitive edge against that weed species, consider uh, changing your planting date. You can use stale seed bed practices and that's where you go in and you actually stimulate weed seeds to germinate in advance of your planting, whether it's with irrigation, whether it's with rainfall, whether with it's a timely cultivation, and then you go in and you destroy the weeds that get up to try and exhaust that initial seed bank. Um, choosing good seed quality and using appropriate seeding rates um, if you know that you know certain varieties have rapid and even germination, getting a stand up evenly, getting a stand up rapidly is going to be so important. And that's going to actually play into my second part of my talk about herbicides. I did not have a good seed lot this year. I didn't get even germination. I didn't get a good stand. I had a lot of weeds and not only that, uh, the poor stand quality, the poor seed quality affected the hemp response to the herbicides and I saw a lot more injury than I expected to. With transplants, transplants help you maximize the height differential between the crops and the weeds and that is going to help improve the competitiveness. So if you can put transplants in, they're already up before your weeds get up and they can get established, get over that transplant shock quickly, get them established, it's going to put you ahead. With cultivation, uh, where you are cultivating, keeping your rows as straight as possible because that is going to improve your ability to get in tight with the row when it comes to cultivation events. And it's going to reduce the potential for crop damage by if, if your row is waving and then you're going straight, taking out uh, plants with your cultivation. Plastic mulches. Uh, managing the, the weeds between the rows and in the planting holes is still really important. We've got a trial out at the farm right now where we're managing weeds in the holes and we're just letting them go and we're seeing real differences. Even those few weeds that get up in the hole are enough to really compete with the hemp. And then minimizing weed seed spread. So this is just good cleanliness, making sure if you're working in fields, work your cleanest fields first. Don't go from an exceptionally weedy field and carry that mud or carry chaff or straw or whatever material into your cleanest field. You know, try, try to always work cleanest to weediest. So we talked about integrated weed management strategies. Now we're just going to go into the herbicides because everybody does ask about herbicides. When are we getting a herbicide? When are we going to get a herbicide? There is, there are products moving through the EPA. There are products moving through the IR4 project, which is uh, specializing in bringing chemical technology to um, uh, specialty crops or, or low acreage crops. So I have been told that ethylfluralin sonolan should be coming on the market soon. It's on the market. It should be having hemp on its label soon. It was in the spring. It's now been pushed back to the fall. So be on the lookout for Sonolan. It is a group three. So it's the same chemical family as trifluralin. It's the same chemical family as pendimethalin. All right. It tends to be a bit stronger on grasses than it is on broadleafs. I am going to tell you, I have seen some of the label language for ethylfluralin. We did a bunch of work with pendimethalin this year, Pral H2O, and we got a lot of rain, and we saw a lot of damage 
uh, because we basically sort of flooded our fields. If you're going to have a situation where you do have flooding or you're going to potentially be getting a lot of rain, you're going to have the same potential issues with ethafluralin, which is going to be stem swelling and root damage. But it is coming on the market. Uh, there is another product, a grass herbicide, uh, Quizalifop. It goes under Assure 2. Uh, it is also on, in trials, and I believe AMVAC is very interested in supporting uh, this chemistry in hemp. And then there's a lot of interest, and more important than just researcher interest, there's also, I believe, company interest in a product called Tupirlate. It is a group 27 HPPD inhibitor. Uh, and there's work again going on through the IR4 project looking at topirolate. Now topirolate and Assure 2 are going to be further down the pipeline than ethafluralin, which we're anticipating very soon. With respect to pre-emergence herbicides, I did put in a couple of pre-emergent herbicides trials this year looking at a number of products at uh, two different rates. Uh, they span a bunch of different chemical classes and I'm going to tell you it wasn't good. Uh, hemp is really sensitive to a lot of herbicides and again I had a very poor seed lot and I think that kind of enhanced the damage I saw. Even the products that I was expecting to see much more safety with such as Sandia which is halosulfuron or uh, dual magnum which is esmetolachlor I still saw too much damage, too much crop loss again I think due to the seed lot. The other thing is we are looking at herbicides for use in transplanted hemp, so it would be put down prior to transplanting. And uh, again, uh, saw more injury than I wanted to see. Had some really good weed control, but um, too much crop stunting. Uh, again, we did have a lot of rainfall, and that could have enhanced the results we saw. Another thing that we saw, it's not just what happens with the root zone when we're talking these pre-emergent herbicides. We transplanted and we had a driving rain and driving wind and we had our hemp transplants touch the ground where we had just put our herbicides down and we burned a lot of hemp, you know, that we weren't anticipating, you know, 40 mile an hour winds to come through. So understand that some of these products, in addition to potentially causing root damage, if you have transplants and they get wilted or you have those driving rains, those driving winds, and you get the, the leaf contact with the soil surface, you can also have injury. I'm not going to go into it, but uh, I talked that hemp is really sensitive to a bunch of herbicides. The second handout is actually hemp responses uh, to some post-emergence herbicides. So in the case of drift events, I actually have gotten a lot of drift calls. Is this herbicide injury? Is this herbicide injury? Is this herbicide injury? And so things like dicamba, 2,4-D, glyphosate, some of the other products. And so I've just put some pictures and talked a little bit about the modes of action and the kinds of symptomology that you can expect to see. I am working currently on a herbicide injury website that's going to go up at Cornell Cal's this fall. And it will have a lot of hemp pictures in it because hemp, again, is really sensitive to a lot of herbicides. And that is my talk, and I'm going to pass it off to Chris unless you've got questions. Yes. Question. Yeah, I think the lack of herbicides now is kind of an opportunity for us to really get good at uh, things like mechanical cultivation. So can you tell me what your experience with hemp is in mechanical cultivation? Is it sensitive to its root level and the mechanical stuff? So I've worked with transplanted hemp and cultivation and I have not seen sensitivity to the cultivation event itself. My problem is, is that the cultivation not getting between the hemp plants well enough and still leaving too many with the cultivation system that we're studying, still leaving too many, too many weeds present and, and still allowing for too much com uh, competition. The, I did not have the cultivator that I wanted because of supply chain issues, but we now have it. So now I do have 
a actually a vision guided cultivator that follows the rows much better, has some better implements on it that I think is going to get us a lot closer than uh, what we were using. What kind of depth are you talking about? Yeah, we're, uh, we're still looking at a fairly shallow depth, like uh, an inch. I have a question. Yes. So since hemp is so sensitive to herbicides, if you already have weeds established, what do you recommend to do? It, well, it's going to depend what hemp you're growing. If, if you've got the ability to, to cultivate, using cultivation. It, it's also going to very much depend on, you know, maybe a, a high value, you know, a CBD hemp where you can get in there and invest in hand weeding. You know, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of effort, and it's a lot of money. Uh, but yeah, we don't, we don't have a lot of strategies. There is some work that has been done out at Nebraska looking at flame weeding. Uh, Steve Knezovic, has got some information online about flame weeders. Again, we were supposed to do flame weeding, but because of supply chain issues, I do not have my flame weeder. It is still coming. So we are going to be investigating flame weeding next summer. We do have our new cultivator, so we're going to have a much better ability to get a lot closer to the crop. And uh, I, again, also, I, I have, I've got some more tools coming. It's just COVID delays has, is, is playing into a couple of years. How about just row covers? I know it's probably a lot at scale, but... Like plastic? Plastic or fabric. Yeah, oh yeah. So we, the, I, we're using weed cloth. Sorry, can you repeat? Oh, he asked about weed cloth. So she had asked the question, what if you already have weeds up in the ground? Yeah, so finding really good control with the plastic or the weed cloth, but we are finding that you've got to still be very actively managing in the holes. It takes a lot less effort maybe to do those plants, but letting those plants go, we're still seeing significant yield loss if we don't go in there and control the weeds that are coming up through the planting hole in the plastic. Thank you, Lynn. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.